For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson. Welcome to the latest readout video from our Wednesday Wake Up newsletter. And let's get the business out of the way right away. If you're not already a YouTube subscriber, please do sign up. It's free because it really helps us build the channel. Speaking of things building up, it looks like the heat wave has built up, peaked and subsided here in Ottawa. But not before the nation's capital rocketed up in the rankings for most days in a year over 30 degrees Celsius. By early July, we were closing in breathlessly on 60th place, and by late July, we reached 29th. But here's the weird thing. The top five years are, in ascending order, 1911, 1949, 1921, 1955, and 1876. Spot the pattern? Me neither. We also heard that we had the hottest July since 1921, with 1916 in third place and 1955 in fourth. Which is not a pattern of a relentless buildup of temperature. It's a pattern of monkeys throwing darts. Speaking of which, you may have heard that BC set several high temperature records on Canada Day. Or maybe you didn't, because Vancouver's record was for the lowest high on Canada Day since 1960, nearly 7 degrees below average, whereas Chilliwack had the lowest high temperature on July 1st in recorded history, a term here meaning in the last 139 years. Of course, to belabor the historian looks at climate change point, if you go back even further, you see a lot more instability and very little that would help you claim that the last five years or the last 10 are some sort of dramatic departure from the stability we supposedly enjoyed for thousands of years until James Watt ruined everything with an effective fossil fuel steam engine. And indeed, in the newsletter, we also look at another study that said, just as climate alarmists were failing to high stick the medieval warm period right out of the game, that evidence from marine life, quote, consistently shows the Roman as the warmest period of the last 2000 years, about two degrees Celsius warmer than average values for the late centuries for the Sicily and Western Mediterranean regions, end quote. It's just one part of the world, it's just one study, but it certainly doesn't support the claim of recent unprecedented temperatures. Despite which, the New York Times just doubled down on polar bears going extinct due to climate change and tripled down on that old chestnut about warming, unleashing millions of climate refugees. Mind you, the fine print in the latter story says actually it won't. But what I want to emphasize here is that the former the story they were hyping about the polar bears, remember those former poster beasts for climate extinction until it turned out they were secretly flourishing once we stopped overhunting them, predictably depends on the exploded RCP 8.5 scenario, which involves massive, impossible increases in fossil fuel use. Which is especially brazen since our latest installment of Schellenberger's apostasis confirms his claim that, quote, carbon emissions have been declining in rich nations for decades and peaked in Britain, Germany, and France in the mid 70s, end quote. So, really, people, get a new scare story? Oh, they did. The alarmists were busy breaking out the bubbly over a new study saying that ECS, or equilibrium climate sensitivity, that's the amount of warming to expect if atmospheric CO2 doubles is at the higher end of the conventional range. Unfortunately, observational data suggests the opposite. As we noted another item from our new collaboration with CO2science.org, Arctic warming is stubbornly refusing to do what the computer models tell it to. So better not break out the champagne after all. Especially not because those bubbles are CO2. Ah. There's lots more in the newsletter, including a new Canadian government project to end projects by requiring that, in addition to all the other regulatory requirements, mega projects show how they'll help the government meet its fatuous net zero by 2050 pledge. Once more, it's all maize and no cheese. And the newsletter has another illustration that this smear about deniers being paid liars is itself a lie because the alarmists have most of the money. Of course, money's even worse at buying truth than at buying friends, though, as Spike Milligan once pointed out, it can get you a better class of enemy. Whether the sun goes round the earth or the earth goes round the sun had nothing to do with Galileo's bank balance. But if they're going to insult us instead of debating us, surely they could at least get the basic facts straight, like that they've got most of the money. 
Speaking of which, if you're not already a backer, please do visit our website, that's climatediscussionnexus.com, and make a pledge, one time or monthly, to help us compete with Big Green. And again, if you're not already a subscriber, sign up for the Wednesday Wake Up, subscribe to us on YouTube, like us on Facebook, and follow us on Twitter. For the Climate Discussion Nexus, I'm John Robson.